Every year, thousands of yearlings pass through sales rings across Britain and Ireland with the promise of becoming champions. But how do the yearlings get to the sale? How are they bred? How are they raised and prepared? It's time to find out. Situated in the shadows of the famous Highclere Castle, Highclere Stud has been the top consigner at Tattersall's October Book One sale for the last five years. So what better place to visit to find out how yearlings are prepared for one of the top sales? But long before a horse can be prepared for sale, it needs to be bred. Which mare should go to which stallion and why? That's where Highclere's breeding supremo, John Warren, comes in. If we're talking in breeding terms, um, it's a slow burn. Um, you have to tremendous patience. Um, you have to be prepared to experiment. Um, the process is to retire the, the filly or the mare here. Um, and we help um, with the mating plan, um, trying to get the right make, shape, pedigree, nicks, temperament, all factored in to produce um, the desired yearling, either commercially for the market, where we're always working three years um, behind the market um, in preparation of selling the animal as a yearling in principle. Give one piece of advice to somebody who's setting out and thinking, you know, I, I fancy a stab at breeding a racehorse. If you wanted to breed a racehorse, I would say be prepared for the long-term burn. Um, when you produce the first foal, you're analysing what it looks like, whether it's taken after the mother, whether it's taken after the father. Then the second one appears, and the third one appears, and the foot, and all of a sudden there starts to be a pattern, potentially, not always, but you're looking for this pattern to, to improve your mating plan for the preceding stallions that are coming along. So we're always um, uh, absorbing information and that is the slow burn. It's not something that's instant that you can quickly make your mind up. So my advice would be um, do it well. If you're going to do it, I would say to breed horses now, it, it's quite costly. Um, overheads are very high. The rewards are fantastic if you get it right. The rewards are amazing. But I would say do it well and be prepared for the, the long, slow burn. There can be no foal without a stallion. Paco Boy currently stands at Highclere and, like all stallions, has a clearly mapped out schedule each year. The covering season starts on Valentine's Day, um, which is quite apt. He, um, depending on the mares that are due to be booked in for him, last year he had 120 and, and in year one he had 133, I think it was. So he's been very well supported early on, which is great from in terms of his career. Um, so the mares, you know, they will arrive, our covering slots, uh, first thing in the morning, lunchtime, early evening, and we've even covered in the middle of the night, depending on how many are due for that day. But, uh, yeah, no, he's up 6.30, early covering, and then he's back, rest, he's, he's kept. Uh, we keep him in uh, stallion boxes nearby. Um, it's, a fairly, it's a fairly rigorous routine, really, um, but uh, he's very good at it, so uh, we don't have too many problems. How many mares can a, a stallion cover? How many does he cover in a day, for example? Again, mare dependent. Um, obviously, we're governed by the cycles of a mare, um, and that's all got a time and a line and work out. Sometimes we can have too many mares that are ready for him at one time, so you have to rejuggle. Um, but maximum you would want to cover, from our point of view, is four. We give him about a six six hour break in between each covering. So, a lot of effort goes into making the right match and getting the mare in foal, but it's when that foal is born that the hard work really begins. Each individual is weaned from its mother at about five months old, put into paddocks of four or five, and rotated around Highclere's 300-acre site. Their preparation as racehorses begins. Well, when they come in from the paddock, I think a lot of, a lot of um, the preparation unit is the base work which is done from starting literally from the day they're born um, and if they're reared well on good land and on good farms and handled well you're, you the basics are there and then when you start to bring them in to prepare them you're sort of joining the pieces together um, 
we very often say when they come in to start prep that, that you see a yearling and it's in three pieces. It's sort of neck, middle, quarters, and they're all different angles. Um, and then our job here for, for these two months is to sort of pull the whole picture together. And it is, um, you know, it is a bit of a catwalk for sales. You've, you know, they, they, they've got to all look right on that day all the same. You know, there's 39 here, I think 38, 39, going to, to book one. And as I think I was saying to you earlier, it is a little bit like baking cakes. And, you know, we want them all to rise together. And they're all different, so that's not always easy. <laughs> each yearling is unique, and each requires exactly the right level of preparation in order to reach its potential. Each requires a solid foundation. Foundation is all to do with the gently, gently um, work that it takes to get the fitness into them without pushing young, immature animals. So we tend to work our horses um, little and often. So they'll go up two and possibly three times a day in their preparation for, for that, the rigors of the sales and training. So the horse will um, typically go out in the morning, it'll have a good hand walk, um, it'll cool off on the walker, it'll go in the lunge ring and learn how to spin around a lunge ring because at auction they have to be wind tested so a horse needs to have the efficiency of going around a lunge ring. We will put side reins on the horse to teach them to hold themselves well and behave when they're starting their initial process of the breaking period. So all of that takes a 10 week period and some horses take the rigors of the exercise better than others. So it's adjusting and finding out how all those components again can all fit together to get the horse looking at his peak for the sales without being pushed and pressurized and put into the marketplace where he's something that he ultimately won't be. So you don't have them big fat horses that you can't see what they are and you don't have them light framed where they can't take the... So it's trying to get this regular balance and, and that is a very specific 10 weeks of, um, of foundation prep that is required with um, expert handling from, as I say, the great staff we have here and my wife who's um, the headmistress. We've got a great team here, fantastic team and um, we've got two, you know, two main yards running, uh, run by two excellent guys, um, Brian O'Rourke and Diego Romeo, and they have very good teams under them. And I think it's, it's a team effort. And if you've got the right people and that sort of quiet approach, then the horses come. If everybody starts to panic, the horses feel that. And, you know, we, we need to get there calmly. Probably I try and give the perception of calm, and underneath it's all bubbling. <laughs> um, but uh, no, I think it's going quite well at the moment. I'm happy. Generations of experience, thousands of hours of skilled handling, and 10 solid weeks of rigorous preparation. These are the ingredients that see High Clear horses performing so well at the sales. But the value of each individual animal will be decided, as ever, in the crucible of the sales ring the right pedigree, the right preparation and the right impression can command a king's ransom.